Welcome into the video. I'm your tech guy, Wayne, and today I wanna to walk you through how to use the Samsung Galaxy S24 for beginners. This will be a full beginner's walkthrough. I'm gonna start with taking just a tour of the phone, showing you where all the buttons are, how to navigate the screens. From there, we'll go into how to download an app, how to make calls, how to send text messages. I'll show you how to set up your email. From there, we'll move on to how to take pictures. And then we'll end the video with how to make your text size larger and how to control the volume. So make sure you watch all the way to the end so you don't miss any important tips. And if you find the video helpful, make sure you bump that like button down below. If I miss anything important in the video, make sure you leave a comment down below and I'll add it to the next video. Let's go ahead and get started. So. First, we're just gonna take a quick tour of the external buttons of the phone. So there's no buttons on the left side of the phone, but on the right side of the phone, you will find your volume up, volume down, and the power button right here. Now at the bottom of the phone here, you'll find the charging port, which is, a, it's called a type C charging type. So if you need to buy a new cable, you need to find a type C cable. On the left here, you'll find your SIM card tray. This is where you put in the SIM card of the phone. One important note, the phone does not take a micro SD card. You cannot fit those in the phone, so just keep that in mind. Now you'll notice you don't see a headphone jack. Now they actually sell adapters that will let you plug in to the Type-C charging port, and you can then plug your traditional headphones in, or they sell Type-C headphones now. So I'll have a couple of those pop up on screen, just so you'll have some recommendations for that. Okay, now let's get into how to basically wake up the phone. If you notice right now, the screen is dim, and when it's dim, that means that the phone is asleep, and to wake it up, you can either tap the screen two times, or you can tap the power button here. Uh, just to show you, pressing the power button will wake it up. Pressing it again puts it back to sleep. Once the screen is awake, take your finger, put it on the screen and just drag up the screen. It's a drag. You put your finger on the screen and just drag up and that will wake up the phone. Now right now we don't have a password on the phone. Um, I'll cover that in a later video, how to put a password or how to use your fingerprint to unlock the phone. But for now, because there's no password, you just drag your finger up the screen and that will unlock the phone, okay? Now, if you ever wanna turn the phone off, to do that, you need to bring your finger to the top of the screen and you're just going to drag your finger down the screen and then drag it down a second time. And when you do that, a button is gonna pop up next to the settings wheel. This is the how you get to the settings of the phone here. To the left here, you have the power button and you can tap on that and simply tap on power off and that's how you turn the phone off. Or you can tap the restart button to restart the phone. So just some things to note. Now we'll go over more about this menu up here, but I just wanted to show you that's how you turn the phone off. Now, navigating the phone, um, really happens through these three buttons at the bottom here. So this is the home button, this is the recent apps button, and this is the back button. Let's start with the home button and kind of explain what this does. So right now we're on what is called the home screen. And so you'll have these little icons that'll be on the screen. Now, those icons are basically apps. Now, what is an app? Think of how a computer has programs, phones have apps or uh, applications. So apps is just short for applications. So if you ever hear me reference these icons, I'm just referring to the apps. These are the programs of the phone, okay? If I ever go into one of these little apps or programs and I wanna get back to this screen, I simply am gonna tap this home button at the bottom of the screen. For example, this is the web browser right here. If I tap on the web browser, it's gonna take me to the internet where I can do a web search. But if I wanna go back to that home screen, I'm just gonna tap on this home button right here, and that'll take me back to the home screen. That's all this button does. It just takes you right back to your main home screen, okay? When in doubt, if you hit the wrong thing, don't worry, just simply tap the home screen or the home button at the bottom of the screen here. Now. To the left, we have what is called the Recent Apps button. If we ever open up one of these little apps, for example, I have the web browser open. If I hit the Home button, 
and I go back to the home screen, that program or that app is still running in the background. And if I want to get back to it, I can obviously tap on the icon here or I can tap on the recent apps button and it will show me what apps are still running in the background of the phone. And all I can do is just tap on it and I can get right back to it and continue using the web browser. Now, if you want to close an app because you're not using it anymore, tap on the recent apps and you're just going to swipe up like this or drag up and that will close out that application. You can also tap the close all button and that will close all of the apps that are running in the background, which is a very wise thing to do because it will keep your phone running nice and fast and smooth because you won't have all these things running in the background. Okay. Next, let's move on to the back button. And all this does, it just takes you back one step. Here's a good example. Take your finger, bring it to the top of the screen and just drag down the screen. And that's gonna bring up this little menu here. Let's tap on this settings wheel. This is our shortcut to get to the settings menu. And here, let's say I'm in the settings right now and I, let's say I go to the display and I were to go to uh, camera cutout. Now, if I want to go back one screen, I can either tap on this arrow that's all the way in the upper left corner, or I can use my back arrow right here or back button to go back one step. And if you want to keep going back, just press it again. Now we're on the main page of the settings. And if I press it again, it's going to take me out of settings and back to the home screen. So all this does, it just takes you back one step. That's all it does. Okay. These are the main three buttons you will use to navigate the phone. And uh, that aside from simply just touching the different options that you see. So home, recent apps, back button. So far, if you're following me and you're learning and the video is helpful, make sure you bump that like button. Let's move into the next section. We're going to go over uh, another section of the phone, which is called the notification uh, panel or notification menu. We're going to take our finger. We're going to drag it down the screen and you'll see what is called the notification panel. Now, one thing to note, um, the camera is in the center of the screen. If you drag down from the left, the menu looks like this. If you drag down to the right of the camera, the menu will look like this. So just note that what I'm referring to is when you drag down from the left side of the screen, because this is the simplified menu of notifications. This is the advanced menu. I guess what? If I drag down the left once, I see this. If I drag a second time, I get that same menu. So I don't want you to be confused. I just want you to Make sure when you drag down, you always drag down to the left of the camera, okay? So in this menu, you'll find messages and notifications from all of your apps or programs. For example, if you get a new email, it'll show up in here. If you get a new text message, it'll show up in here. If you have a Facebook notification, it'll show up in here. This is the main control center for all your notifications. If a message comes through, you'll normally see it first in that menu and you can just scroll through all the notifications. And once you read it, you just simply swipe left on that notification to get rid of it. Now, if you'd like to learn more about that notification, you just tap on it and it'll take you into that app and you can read the full message and you can respond to it as well. Now, let's swipe down again. You'll find a few other things here. You'll find what are called your switches, and these are basically shortcuts to the main, the most used uh, settings or functions on the phone. So in the top left here, you'll find what is called the Wi-Fi switch. And this is how you turn your Wi-Fi on and off. Right now, it's lit up white. That means my Wi-Fi is turned on. But if I tap it and now it's grayed out, that means my Wi-Fi is turned off. OK. If I want to turn it back on, I simply just tap on it just like that. 
it lights up and you'll see in a few seconds, my Wi-Fi icon is gonna show up at the top here, letting me know I'm connected. Now, if you wanna to connect to a Wi-Fi network, you're simply going to take your finger and instead of tapping on that button, you wanna hold down on it like this. If you keep your finger there for one second, it'll bring up a menu and it'll show you all the available Wi-Fi networks. So obviously I'm already connected to my network, but in your case, let me take you back there. In your case, you may not be connected to a network yet. And so therefore you can scroll through the list to find your network. And then you would simply tap on it. And then um, actually let's tap on this one. You'll get a pop-up. It'll ask you to then enter the password. You'll type in the password, hit connect, and then it will connect you to your home network. Okay. Now, just to show you one more time, if I hold down on it, it's going to take me to this menu. And if I tap on any one of these networks, it's going to take me all the way in to that section of the settings that deals with that option. And these are all the different networks that are available. Okay. Same goes for Bluetooth. Tapping it will turn it off. Tapping it will turn it on. And I'll get a pop up here of some of the different uh, Bluetooth devices I can connect to right now. So you'll find in this menu um, just different shortcuts to the most frequently used settings. This option here is how you control your volume. So notice it's a little speaker and it has a slash over it because the phone right now is on vibrate. If I tap it again, when this is grayed out, it means that my sound is completely turned off. If I get a call or a text message, the phone is not gonna make a noise. Now, if I tap it again and you just see the speaker, that means that your sound is fully turned on. If you get a call, the phone is gonna ring. If you get a text, then same thing, the phone is gonna make a, a noise. So this is sound on. Sorry, I hit the wrong thing. This is sound on. This is the vibrate icon. This is sound off. That's how you toggle between your different uh, sound settings. Okay. You also have airplane mode. You have your flashlight. If you tap on the flashlight, it'll use the camera flash as your flashlight. Very useful there. And if we swipe down further, this is where you'll get a list of more options. So for example, your personal hotspot, you can use to power your uh, tablet or computer, your power saving mode, your GPS. So you have all these other options as well. You also have your brightness meter. You can use this to make the screen brighter or dimmer. Um, you have your eye comfort shield. So if the screen is too bright, you can tap this and it will get put a tint over the screen so that it's not so bright. And you have your smart view option, which will let you mirror your phone to a Samsung smart TV or to a Google Chromecast. So these are just a few of your options. You can also swipe left. There's another page with some other shortcuts here too. Again, these are just different switches that will help you get to important settings features faster. Okay. Now that really is the second part of the tour of just navigating the phone. Now we're going to move on to the next section, which is how to download apps on the phone so you can get more programs. But first I want to show you where do you find the apps on the phone? Well, you swipe up on the home screen or you drag up like this quickly. And this will take you to your app screen. And then you can see all the different apps that are on the phone. I clearly have a lot more because I've been using this phone for a while, but these are all the apps or programs that are on the phone. Now, if you want to get a new app, what you'll need to do, let's hit our home button. We're going to tap on the Play Store. The Play Store is basically the digital store where all the apps are found. Let's go into it now. Now, one important note before I get into just explaining the Play Store more, if you have not um, signed into your Gmail account yet, then you will not see this on your screen. So it's important to note, 
if you don't, if your screen doesn't show this, if your screen says, hey, sign into your Google account, it means that you need to either sign into your Google account or you might say, I don't have a Google account. And in that case, you need to basically hit the button that says create an account or get an account. It takes one minute to set up an account. It's free. And once that's set up, it'll give you access to the store where you can then download applications to the phone. So now that we're in the app store, let's just give a quick overview of how this works. So at the bottom of the screen, you'll see some categories. You'll see games, apps, you have a search button, you have offers and books. Now, if there's a specific app that you're trying to download, you'll want to tap on search. And then you'll get this search box pop at the top of the screen and we'll tap in the box and you can type in the name of the application you want to download. Maybe you want to find a chess game. You would type in chess. And in the bottom right corner, you'll see a magnifying glass. Tap on the magnifying glass. And now you'll see some different chess games. Now, if you're if you're saying, well, how do I know which one to download? Well, you can simply tap on one of these and you can swipe up and you can look at pictures of what the uh, app actually looks like. You can see if you like how the app looks. And normally, if you like how it looks, simply you're going to just swipe back up and tap on this blue install button. And this will begin to install and download the app on the phone. Really easy. Now, one important thing to note, not all apps are free. Some apps do have to be paid for. So I just want to show you um, the Sudoku game. It's free and I know it's free because this blue button says install. However, if the blue button said a price, for example, if it said 99 cents, that's how you know it's not free. And then you have to make sure that that's an app that you want to try because once you download it, you can't return it. Okay. Okay. Now guess what? I want to get out of this Sudoku app or this screen. I'm going to use my back button. Now take me back to my chess game. Now guess what? The app has downloaded and I know it's downloaded because I don't see that blue install button anymore. It just says play. So I can simply tap on play and it will take me right into that app. And then I can begin experiencing what the chess.com app is like. Let's hit our home button. Now, what if you say, I don't want to play chess right now. I want to play later. How do I find that app later when I want to play it? Well, take your finger. We're going to again, drag up the screen and look for the chess app. Now the apps are in order by alphabetical. So here it is. Here's our chess app. I can simply tap on the chess icon and it will take me right back to the app, just like that. So that's the process to download an app. Now I wanna show you a little trick that will make it easier for you to download an app. Let's go back to the Play Store. Now I'm gonna hit the back button and I'm back on the search page. I'm gonna tap on the search button again and then I'm gonna tap search apps and games. Now notice there is a, a microphone to the right of the search box. Now, guess what? I can simply tap on this microphone and then I can just say the name of the app that I want to download and it'll search for me. You don't even have to type it just like this. Price is right slots. So just like that, it will type in the words for you and then It'll give me recommendations based on what I asked for. Let's see. Here's a Price is Right uh, bingo game. So that's not what I want. I'm going to hit the back button. Let's see. My Vegas slots. Let's see. Nope. Those aren't Price is Right either. There used to be a slot machine game that was Price is Right theme. I guess they don't have it anymore. But anyway, the point is tapping that microphone is what will allow you to search with your voice. And it comes in very helpful if you really don't know how to spell the app you're trying to download or you're just trying to save some time. So let's hit the home button. And that it concludes our section in talking about downloading apps. Just as a reminder, remember, you just when you're on the home screen, swipe up. And that's what takes you to what is called your app drawer. 
and you can scroll through here to find all the apps on the phone. Now on the first page, you'll find these three folders that most people overlook. If you tap on the Google folder or Microsoft folder or Samsung folder, there are apps inside of these folders. So for example, the smart switch app or smart things. So you might be trying to find a certain app and you can't find it. It could be in a folder. And these are the, the main three folders that will come installed on the phone. Now, so far, if you found the video helpful and you're learning, I'm happy to hear that. Please make sure you bump that like button and make sure you uh, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Next, let's go over how to make a call. First, I'm gonna make a call so you can see what it's gonna look like when the call comes through, and I'll show you how to answer it. And then we'll turn around and I'll show you how to make an outgoing call. Okay, so a call is coming through. What you're gonna do is take your finger, put it on the little green bubble and drag up. And that's how you answer a call. Now, when you want to put the phone on speaker, you can tap speaker button. And finally, when you want to end the call, you're going to hit the red button to end the call. So again, pretty self-explanatory. You just drag up on that little green circle if you want to answer the call. And to the right, if you don't want to answer the call, you drag on the red, red phone button and that will decline the call. Now, there's one more thing that you'll want to know, which is there's a way to decline the call and send a message. So right here, it says send a message if you just swipe up. It'll give you three options. You can have it decline the call and send a text message reply and say, oh, please text me. I'll call you later. Or can you call me back? Here you go. This way it declines the call, but it also sends them a message and lets them know, hey, I can't talk right now. I'll call you later or please text me. Now let's go over how you uh, initiate a call. First, you want to tap on the green phone button in the bottom left corner and tap on keypad and you'll simply type in the phone number. Type in the phone number and you want to put in the area code and then you're going to tap the green phone button in the center and that will initiate the call. OK, and when you want to hang up once again, press the red button to decline. Next, let's go over how to send a text message right next to the phone app. You'll find the text message icon. You're going to tap on that. And this is our text message menu here. And basically you'll see any text messages that have been sent to you. And if you want to read it, you'll simply tap on the message and you'll see the phone number of who the message is from. You'll see what the message is here. You'll see some suggested responses that you can simply tap. And it'll automatically send those responses or you can tap in the box that says text message right here. And when you tap in the box, it'll bring up the keyboard, which will allow you to then type. Hi. Now, this is the send button. When you're ready to send your message, you're going to hit that button to send it. Now, if you want to attach a picture to the message, you're going to tap on this little icon. So it says text message right next to it is this little icon here. And here you can find all the pictures you've taken on the phone and simply tap on a picture and add it to the message. For example, I'm going to just tap on this picture here and by tapping it, it's going to add it to the message. And then when I'm ready to send the message, I can simply hit again, the send button to send it. Now to the left here, you'll see a little emoji icon, a little smiley face. And when you tap on that, it will take you to uh, emojis and you can scroll through here to see a list of these cool emojis to add to your message. You can tap on this little stop sign to add it to the message here. Now you'll also find gifts. If you tap on gifts here, you'll find these really fun messages that you can add to the text as well. For example, I can tap on excited and tap on this. And then when you're done adding whatever you want to add to the message, hit your back button. That'll take you out. You may have to hit it a couple of times. And now 
I have the GIF attached to the message and I have this little emoji and I can hit this button to send it off. So that's how you add those fun little um, visual messages or an emoji. Now, one more thing I want to show you. There is a pop up here. This is a record option. You can actually record a message and attach the message to the text message. So watch this. I'm going to hold down here and it will begin to record my voice. But the catch is you have to hold down on that button. Let me show you one more time. So this is the button here. You put your finger on the button and you keep your finger there and it will begin recording a message. Now, if you swipe up, then it will continue to uh, record even without you holding the button. So now I can record a message. Hey, just wanted to say good morning. Hope you have a great day. And then you can simply hit the stop button to stop the message or you can hit attach to attach it right to the message. You can also listen to the recording before you send it by hitting this button here. And, it won't begin and maybe you change your mind, decide you don't want to attach it. No problem. Simply hit the X right above the message and that will delete that recording. Now, one more important thing that I think you guys will appreciate if I tap in the box that says text messages. Maybe I want to type a message. Well, I want to put a message, but I don't want to type it. I just want to say it and I want it to type a message for me. So in that case, you're going to tap on this microphone that you see at the top of the keyboard here. And then it will begin to listen and then it will begin to transcribe everything you say and add it into the message. When you're done, hit the arrow here and it has now added everything I said to the message. And if I want to send it, I'm going to hit this button here to send it off. So that's a brief rundown of how to basically type and send a text message, the different things you can do. Now, I want you to notice I initially went into a message that was already open. But if you want to create a new text message, you would tap on this box in the bottom right corner, which is this little icon here. When you tap there, it will allow you to type in a name or a phone number and start a brand new message just like this. I'm going to type in a phone number. So type in the phone number with the area code and then tap send to and then tap there. And now it will start a brand new message with that phone number. OK, now one more important thing to note: if you want to create a group message and you want to send a text to multiple people, you tap on this icon here that's right next to the phone. This is the group message icon. And when you tap on there, it will then allow you to type in another phone number and add it to the group so you can send them a text message. OK, so that's a, a brief rundown of how text messages work. And it's really easy to communicate. I would encourage you watch this section multiple times just so you can get used to all the different things that are available in sending text messages. Next, let's go over how to set up your email. Now, if you swipe up on the home screen, it'll take us to our app drawer. Go to the Google folder in the upper left corner, says Google, and tap on Gmail. Now, I'm already signed into my email account, but I want to show you how to add your email account. And if you have multiple email accounts, you can add multiple to the Gmail app. What you're going to do Come up to the upper right corner and tap on the little icon and come down to add another account. And then it will take you to the setup email screen. And here you'll need to select the type of account that you have. So if you have a Gmail or a Google account, you simply tap on Google. Same thing goes if it's a Yahoo or if it's an Outlook, you'll tap on the appropriate uh, prompt. 
Now, once you select those, you'll simply put in your email address and your password, and it will give you access to that email account. However, if you have an account type that you don't see on the screen, for example, maybe you have an AOL email, or maybe you have a Verizon email or something very specific like at sbcglobal.net, something like that. Here's how you sign into those email types. Hit the home button, go to the Play Store, go to search, tap in the box that says search apps and games. On your keyboard, if you press the one, two, three in the bottom left corner and tap on the at symbol, you then are gonna type in whatever the address is of your email address. For example, if it's an AOL, you type at AOL.com. If it's sbcglobal.net, you type at sbcglobal.net, whatever it is. Right now there is an at AOL that's already showing up here, so I'm gonna tap on that. And what uh, this will do is it will recommend apps that you can use to sign to that email type. So there's actually a dedicated AOL email app that I can simply tap on install right here and I can use this app to check my AOL emails. So that's just a note for those of you who didn't originally see your email type in this list. That is sort of a shortcut on how to find an app that will work with your email type. Okay. Let's hit our home button. So that's a, just a brief rundown of how to sign in to your email account. Now I wanna give you a quick walkthrough of just how the email app works. I just wanna walk you through what you're seeing on the screen here. So this is my inbox and this will show all the new emails that have come through. Now if I want to uh, create a new email, I'm gonna tap on this compose button at the bottom and first, you'll need to type in who the email address is to. So you could type in um, just a random email address. Let's say I want to send an email to people at AOL.com. I'm going to just simply type in the email address in the to box. In the subject, I'm going to put hi. And then I'm going to tap where it says compose email. And then I'm going to type a message or I can hit that microphone. Hope you have a great day. So now I have the address of who I'm emailing, a subject, a message. And if I want to attach a picture, I can simply tap on this little paper clip to add a picture to the email or a file. And then I'm going to tap on this button here to send off the message. And that's really all you need to know about email. That's how you send it. Now, if you just want to check an email, you'll notice I have a few different emails that are already showing up in the list here. I can simply tap on one of these emails here and I can basically look at the message of the email right here just by scrolling through. And after you scroll through, you can simply tap the reply button and you can start typing your message and then hit the send button right here to send off your reply. So that's a brief rundown of just the email app. Next, let's go over how to take pictures and I'll give you just a rundown of the camera. The camera normally is located as a shortcut in the bottom right corner. If you don't see it there, you can swipe up and you'll find the camera right there in your app drawer. Let me first explain just the different options you'll see on the screen, and then we'll take a few pictures so you can see what it looks like. By default, it normally will start on photos, and this button in the center will be a little white button, and that is how you snap a picture. And if you want to take a video, you can tap on video, and this button will have a little red dot in the center. That's how you'll know you're on video. You're gonna tap that button to start recording your video, and then you'll tap this button here if you wanna snap a picture while you're recording a video. You can pause the video, keep it going. You can use this button to flip the camera. So guess what, now we'll start recording from the front camera instead of the rear camera. And when you're all done, hit this button to stop the recording. 
and we can swipe back over to photos. You also have what is called portrait. Now, whenever you take a portrait picture, it's going to focus in on one main item and it's going to blur out the background of the picture. This is a really fun setting to use when you're taking a picture of, of a single person because it will focus in on that person and blur out the background and give it a really nice effect. And a few other things to note. So this is how you will switch between your wide angle lens and just the regular lens. So the wide angle will let you have more in the shot, just like that. Let's flip the camera here. Let's say I want to take a picture of this leaf that's in the corner here. I'm just going to tap on this white button here, the shutter to take the picture. And guess what? The shutter is really fast. You can take a bunch at one time. If I switch over to portrait, I can have it focus in. And this is sort of a tricky exercise because I have to focus in my camera in order for it to catch what's on the screen. But Portrait will again, it'll focus in on that main subject, which is the leaf and it'll blur out the background. So that's a quick rundown of the uh, camera, just how to take pictures. Now, after you take the pictures, if you want to look at the pictures you've just taken, you're going to tap on this button to the left. This will take you to all the pictures you've just taken and you can scroll through and look at all the different pictures and let's keep going, let's keep going. We were taking some family pictures earlier. And if you wanna zoom in on a picture, you can just pinch, put your finger on the screen and then just pinch open like this. And that will allow you to zoom in. You can see that beautiful quality that it captured on this leaf here. Now, Another important thing to note, let's hit our home button. If you want to look at those pictures later, you would not go back to the camera to look at those pictures. You'd have to go to your gallery. So swipe up, swipe to your left and look for the gallery. This is your gallery icon. This is how you look at all the pictures you've taken on the phone and you can scroll through and see every picture you've taken. And this is also where you would uh, uh, wanna share a picture. Maybe you say, I really like this picture here. I wanna share it. I wanna send it as a text or an email. You're gonna tap on this button here, which is your share button. This will allow you to share it out. You'll just scroll through here and you'll select if you wanna send it as a text message, a Gmail, you could post it on Instagram or even Facebook or send it as a WhatsApp message just by tapping on that icon so it's ready to send. So that's a brief rundown of how to take videos, how to take pictures, and then where to find them after you've taken them later. All right, guys, we are getting close to the end of the video. The last thing I want to show you is how to make the text size larger so it's easier for you to read what's on the screen. Right now, my text size is pretty small and that might not work for you. You may want it to be a little bit bigger. So to make it larger, we're going to swipe down from the top of the screen tap on the settings wheel in the upper right corner, display, go to font size and style. And this is our example text here. And if we want to make that text bigger, I can simply just tick up here and this will continue to make the size of all the wording larger. Make it as large as you need to or as small as you need to. You can also tap on the font style and you can change how the text shows up on the screen with the slightly different font style. Now, after we finish, let's say we set it here. When I hit the home button, you'll notice all the words are larger now. So that's how you make the text bigger. And also in the text messaging app right here, you'll notice all the words are now larger as well. So hopefully that helps you guys out in just being able to read what's on the screen. This brings us to the end of our video. I did wanna point out one other cool thing you guys should consider. 
This is the Samsung Fit 3. It's a really inexpensive uh, smart watch slash activity tracker. They run anywhere between $60 to $80. And these will pair really nicely with the Samsung Galaxy S24. And you can use it to keep track of your steps, your heart rate, your workouts, uh, your water intake, and your calories. So really cool device. And I'll have a link right here on the screen of where you can get one. Um, I used it for a couple of months and really, really enjoyed it. So if you're looking for something inexpensive to just track your activity, definitely consider picking up one of these. Hope you guys found this video helpful. If it was, hit that like button down below and leave me a comment and let me know what was the most helpful section I went over in the video. And also let me know what your follow-up questions are. If there's anything else that I did not cover that you would like for me to go over, I will work on a part two of this video and I'll hopefully get that released really soon. So definitely leave me your comment down below of what other things you'd like to learn about on this phone. And if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. And in the comment section of this video, you will find a link to some of my most recommended accessories for this phone. Um, some of you guys may want to consider a longer charging cable, a really good pair of earbuds, or even a charging stand for your phone to sit on at night when you're sleeping. So you'll find all those in the comment section and in a pinned comment in the description or uh, in a pinned comment down below. So check that out and get any other things that would go well with this phone. I have a bunch of recommendations there. Thanks again for watching. Take care and as always, have a good one.